Persona 5 and this remaster, Persona 5 Royal, are probably the two of my most favourite video games ever because of its immersive world, the beautifully done visuals, the many personal stories it tells, and Game of Girl GF. And because this isn't a small spin-off, but instead a big, full-on sequel to the original Persona 5, I was stoked to join the Phantom Thieves again in their next adventure during their rebellious teenage phase. So assuming that you already know Persona 5 Royal's story, this video will be taking a spoiler-free look at Persona 5 Strikers. Man, I need a new hard drive. 113 gigabytes of footage, I only have 109 left. Persona 5 Strikers, otherwise known as Persona 5 Scramble, the Phantom Strikers in Japan, because Atlas thinks the West is incapable of having subtitles in the latest entry in the Persona 5 series, came out a year ago in Japan and only came out recently here. Thank you, Mr. Virus. It's the first Persona game on the Switch and the second to be released on PC, the first being Persona 4 Golden. But of course, because both the original Persona 5 and Royal are on PS4, I decided to buy Strikers on PS4 as well. Not only because I get to have all three games on the same console, but the performance is obviously just better. Although I do kind of wish I bought the game on the PC because somehow the dialogue audio mixing is atrocious. Dialogue will not be at a consistent volume in this game, to the point where the background music will be significantly louder. <laughs> And for some reason, console games just don't like to have audio settings. The game also has an awful anti-aliasing problem to the point where pixels are painfully obvious. And while this is an issue on the PC version, I've heard that there can be workarounds for this if you just mess around with your graphics card settings. When I bought Strikers, I decided to get the deluxe digital copy of the game so I could play it 4 days early. The extra 8 Australian dollars couldn't hurt since all the extra stuff you get is worth more than 20 dollars anyways. But this brings me to an issue I had with the game before it came out, just the entire way it was sold. I missed out on the Phantom Thieves edition of Persona 5 Royal where you get the soundtrack, an art book, and Joker's mask, so I was hoping to get something cool like that when this came out. And while Strikers does give me an art book and the OST, you have to get them digitally. And the OST isn't a code you redeem on iTunes or Google Play, it's an app developed on Unity that you download onto your gaming console. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to rock up to the gym with my PS4 to listen to the Strikers soundtrack. At least with a physical disc for the OST, I can just insert the D into my PC and rip the file straight off of it. Then I could just transfer them straight onto my phone. I mean, technically you could do that if you got the PC version, but that may be a little more complicated depending on how the app's files work. Why didn't they just do something like Persona 4 Golden on PC, where they just give you a folder with the audio files and a PDF for the artbook? And because this is an exclusive to the digital version, I miss out on having the Persona 5 Strikers case to squeeze into my shelf. I mean, Strikers got a physical special edition in Japan. Why be racist to the West and give us a worse deal? Japan, and I'm assuming the rest of Asia, got the limited treasure box, which includes the OST, an art book, and a behind the scenes video physically. All the West gets if you pre-order is a steelbook. Not even Europe gets the steelbook, actually. Just a stupid Joker pin. Okay, but enough about the botched release and lack of collector's items, let's get into the actual game. I want to start things off with the story because that's really the true essence of a Persona game. If you just gave me Persona 5's gameplay without any story or any characters to get attached to, I wouldn't care about the series at all. Persona 5 has a perfect blend between exploring mature themes that you don't see too often in video games and slice of life elements where you can chill with your friends, enact the life you wish you had, and through these chill sessions you get to bond and learn about each one of your friends and it adds a bunch to the story of Persona 5. Persona 5 Strikers, however, is very much more focused on the combat and metaverse aspects of Persona, with the downtime you'll be spending with your friends being mostly through compulsory cutscenes. So you don't feel the rewarding sensation when you actually choose to spend time with your friends and it benefits you by the end of the game, 
but it was definitely a blast seeing the Phantom Thieves have fun as a whole group, and while we do lose the more intimate one-on-one -on -one sessions we spend with each character, the shift in focus isn't inherently a bad thing. This entire game is a road trip summer holiday adventure, so you'll instead go from chilling with the boys and girls in your cozy little RV to visiting some of Japan's most iconic locations. The game is about the group's entire synergy, and it's done extremely well, from the little interactions like when An jokes about Haru calling herself Beauty Thief. Look, it's Beauty Thief! My name is Beauty Thief! To the long-winded conversations the group will have about the dinner they're eating with the trademarked exposition every character blurts out. Am I hearing things? I could have sworn I heard a cat. Oh, uh, nope. Not a real cat, at least. Uh, we were just... Practicing our cat sounds. <laughs> right, Ryuji? Uh, meow? Last year I even took a trip to Japan, so for me, it was nice seeing spots that I spent on one of my holidays recreated in a Persona game where everyone goes on their own holiday. When it comes to the overall story though, unfortunately I didn't find it to be anything amazing. It kind of just retread steps from previous Persona games. There is the original anti-simp aspect of the game, but otherwise it's more of the same thing. Especially when you can get to the end game and you'll think to yourself, hey, haven't I done this before? Actually, no, you won't, because the Phantom Thieves will tell you in your face that you have. Although, as a spoiler-free example, there's a scene where the boys are hanging in a hot spring that changes which gender can use it partway through the day. The boys don't know this, and they stay there longer than they should, and then they get beat up by the girls for being pervs with big fat quotation marks. This is literally the exact same joke they did in the Persona 3 movies. <laughs> Of course, the rest of the chill sessions are actually original. This was just the best example of a reused gag or idea that wasn't a spoiler. There are also just a bunch of cliches that you'll run across in the main story, specifically from sci-fi stories. However, I did like Zenkichi's story and character progression. Zenkichi is one of the new characters introduced for this game, and is a cop who works with the Phantom Thieves since they've been framed for another crime yet again, and the two parties work together to clear their name. He's made to be a little goofy, but he's hardworking. You learn about the corruption he has to face as part of the police, and the relationship he's working hard to maintain but just can't. Sophia is the second new character introduced in the game, she's an AI found in Shibuya deep in the metaverse, and she kind of falls into the sci-fi cliches I just mentioned. She tries to learn about the human heart, and she just ends up being this exposition character that explains human emotions to the player, who will also presumably be human, so we don't really need that exposition. I mean sure, Persona 5 does have crazy exposition in every scene, but Sophia's is on another level. Anger is not just for hurting people, it is also able to save people. Consider, anger saved Alice. If someone is in the wrong, anger can be used to show them the error of their ways. The human heart is such a mystery. Another thing I found lacking in the story was the sense of style the original game had. Yes, Strikers has the amazing graphic design of the original Persona 5, but the same style isn't there in the story. The original Persona 5 was heavily inspired by Arsène Lupin's Gentleman Thief stories. You were literally a thief in that game, infiltrating palaces, stealing treasures, and faking your death to escape custody. In this game, instead of palaces, we have jails, and we're instead freeing prisoners. You don't even infiltrate the actual jails much, a lot of the game will actually be running around outside the jails and finding three towers where you'll find items to unlock the pathway into the jails. Not that this is a bad thing though, the gameplay and progression through the jails is similar enough to Persona 5, it's just the context behind it is a little different, and the reason why I like the context for Persona 5 isn't there in the context of Persona 5 Strikers. Instead, like I said, you'll be breaking out desires from the jails, which again is not bad, it's just different, and while I don't like the changes, maybe you will, it's completely a subjective thing. Although there is generally a lot less symbolism in the metaverse now, instead of a school being distorted into a castle to represent and control with even more symbolism scattered around the castle design and the puzzles, the worlds in Strikers remains most of the same, but slightly distorted to just fit the design of a villain, or it just won't be distorted at all, or maybe it does fully distort- I don't know, it's really inconsistent. But generally the worlds will be empty and the symbolism compared to Persona 5 isn't as strong. Joker also seemed to be imprisoned again in the Velvet Room, which feels really odd because he freed himself from that in Persona 5, and as shown in Persona 5 Royal, he should stay freed. 
And there's also the issue of your friends not getting any character development. Persona 5 kept me engaged through the introduction of a new character for each palace that had experienced a Persona awakening along with the exploration of the villain as we infiltrated the palaces. They tried something similar in Strikers where one of the characters would empathize with the villains of the jails, but it's more surface level compared to Persona 5. They're not bad, but it's just that the moments are not as strong compared to Persona 5's. And that's also probably because the villains just don't have as strong ties to the Phantom Thieves compared to how personal some of the villains in the original Persona 5 were. Plus, they only do this for three of the characters and drop the formula a little later for Zenkichi stuff before arriving to the end game kind of content. Generally, I just didn't find myself invested in the plot as much as I did with the original. Futaba and Maruki's palaces had some of the most engaging worlds to explore and hard-hitting stories. I found myself connecting strongly to the characters there, and those palaces had very powerful messages tied to them. This is probably why one of my favorite jails in the game is actually heavily tied to Zenkichi, because I love the story and the jail complements it so well. But otherwise, whenever we found a new jail, I was more so excited for the action rather than the story beats. Fighting a giant monster with a rock remix of Keeper of Lust was so much more exciting than solving the mystery of the jails and the people using them. Despite that though, as I've mentioned before, having seen the Phantom Thieves join back together for a road trip across Japan was an absolute delight. Seeing the characters I've grown to love have fun and explore Japan beyond the boundaries of Tokyo makes dealing with a less interesting overarching story worth it. Okay, so this is a game, so let's get into the gameplay, which is a mashup of Persona 5's RPG elements and Dynasty Warriors large scale battles where you cut through hordes of enemies. I don't have any experience with the original Dynasty Warriors games, but I have played Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity recently, so I'll be comparing Persona 5 Strikers to that a lot. So, first comparison. Boy is Persona 5 Strikers way harder than Age of Calamity. While Age of Calamity throws you into hordes of cannon fodder, Persona 5 Strikers actually spawns in actual opponents. Because of its turn-based RPG elements, you'll most often need to take down enemies using elemental weaknesses. Age of Calamity's real enemies were the bosses and mini-bosses. There was always a very clear way of doing things, and I never felt lost when fighting enemies. Bosses would have prompts for you to clearly follow, where you would have to use a certain move on them to stun them and give you easy damage. Or you could dodge the enemy and get a flurry rush like in Breath of the Wild. Persona 5 isn't that simple. Firstly, yes, the enemies do prompt you to use Persona skills to hit their weaknesses and earn one mores or all-out attacks, but that's at the cost of SP. You can also do combos that activate Persona skills for free, but that takes some time, which opens you up for attack if you don't finish the combo in time, or you'll have to just give up with the combo entirely, slowing down the damage process. You also don't do as much damage when you use a combo compared to SP Persona skills, so you're taking longer to perform a skill, but you're also doing less damage, and this is where my first issue with the game comes in. It's very weirdly unbalanced. You can cheese through any boss if you just spam it with SP consuming Persona skills, and if you have SP replenishing items, then you're in for one easy fight. If you don't want to waste your SP replenishing items, you can always hack and slash the boss down using the combos, but that's more risky and very messy. If you're fighting a boss without any minions, you'll be dealing with the anime effects from all your allies ganging up on it, so there's suddenly a lot of stuff to keep track of. There'll also be damage counters, weak or resist notices, and even the name of the attack the enemy is about to perform. There's so much visual input in the game to the point where I don't notice the enemy is attacking before it's too late. But if there are minions on the battlefield, then there are just too many enemies to keep track of, so I can easily get bombarded with attacks from off-screen and get no chance to actually land proper hits. As a disclaimer though, I did play Strikers through remote play on my PC instead of directly hooking it up to my monitor, so there was a fair bit of graininess to the game along with me having to play at 30fps because a PS4 can't record if I'm streaming to my PC at 60, which may have hindered my performance. But even then, the fact that it's possible to cheese through a boss with the right items takes away from the urgency of the boss. Maybe that's why they gave the boss so much health, but that also makes the boss tediously long. Maybe this also has to do with how I played the game as well? 
In Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal, grinding is not necessary. As long as you explore mementos regularly and do confidants, you should be getting through the game with minimal issue. With Strikers, however, when I got to the third jail, I noticed I was severely underleveled, only dealing 10 damage while footage I found on YouTube had the characters doing damage closer to the 20s. Strikers seems to be a game that requires a bit of grinding and honestly, I'm not too big of a fan of that. But actually, there are a set of side quests in the game referred to as requests and you unlock most of them as the story progresses, and I really wish I utilized them. There aren't many to do, and you get a bunch of perks from free items, to items being available to buy from Sophia's shop, to bond points, which are essential to powering up your team. And oh my god, after checking out Sophia's shop, I have never wanted to f-word an AI so much in my life. Persona 5 just doing its thing, creating great graphic design and music. But yeah, some of the items you can buy are groceries that Joker can cook and use as SP replenishing items. Yeah, yeah I, I think this game wants me to cheese the bosses. I was actually doing pretty well with just the SP replenishing items I could obtain without doing the requests, and they only just ran out during the final boss, so with the extra meals I can cook up after doing the requests, I should be good to cheese the entire game. I think the bosses could have done without the weaknesses. Original Persona 5's bosses had no weaknesses, and it was just up to you to do as much damage as possible using all your skills. They really should have just removed the weaknesses, gave the boss less health, and simply tossed you to defeat it using pure brute strength instead. With ways to down the enemy so you can rush in and do a bit more damage. Kinda like in Age of Calamity. I think at the end of the day, there's also a bit of psychology at play here. I looked at a video of someone fighting the final boss in Age of Calamity, and the time it takes to beat the final boss is actually quite similar to most of Persona 5 Strikers bosses. But I think the biggest difference between the two games is that the boss gives you opportunities to stun it and attack it by showing you a prompt in Age of Calamity, while in Persona 5 Strikers, you have to do that yourself. You are responsible for using a character that is stronger against the boss. You are responsible for pulling off the combos that will summon your persona without using SP, and you are responsible to summon your persona to use SP. What I was normally doing during my playthrough was that I'd use up all my SP all at once, and without the upgrades to be able to take out the boss with combo attacks in a timely manner, it seemed like a grueling task to finish off the rest of the HP the boss had without persona skills. So I failed to learn the boss's moves, how to dodge them, and ended up dying with my underleveled defense. But after finishing the game and doing some optional bosses, I now take the time to attack it with combos, then occasionally hit it with a full persona skill so I learn how to actually deal with the boss and actually play the game, instead of spamming the boss with skills that take zero effort, then getting lost when I run out of SP. I probably should have prepared better for these bosses though, but like I said, the original Persona 5 didn't need grinding at all, and the only side quests you really need to do are the confidants, where they tell compelling stories through likeable characters, minus Zoya. Compare that to Strikers, where the requests will tend to be monotonous, such as beating enemies, using their weaknesses, getting to certain areas without raising security levels, or redoing bosses. Very few of these requests act similar to confidants, where you hang out with people and earn bond points that way. So far, I've only run into 5 of those, but unlike Confidants, they don't tell very engaging stories. They're usually something simple, like Morgana asking you to buy on some sweets, or teaching Zenkichi to cook. And the latter could have been somewhat interesting if they properly animated it, but it's literally just unvoiced text boxes on top of whatever screen you left off on. Whether it be just you standing in front of a character, or the request menu where you'll report the request is complete. It's quite boring, and I wish they put a tiny bit more effort into it. I have to say though, the side quest system in this game is not bad, it's just not as good as how Persona 5 handled them. It's just more of your standard side quest system rather than the unique experience the main Persona series strives to provide. But let's focus on the bulk of the game, which is the actual combat between regular enemies. Enemies are usually split into two categories, the Masked Shadows and the Personas. The Masked Shadows tend to have no weaknesses and work as the cannon fodder that you can very easily just slice and dice up. Well, most of them at least. Some of them hold machine guns and rocket launchers, but for the most part, it's all easy. And this is why I found Age of Calamity so simple. Pretty much all of the enemies in Age of Calamity minus the bosses are cannon fodder. In Persona 5 Strikers, your main obstacles are the Persona Shadows, which can use elemental abilities, meaning if Joker is holding the wrong Persona or you have the wrong people in your party, you can really be screwed over. They do have weaknesses though, and you'll have to find the perfect balance between using SP and combo skills. Using SP is easy, sure, but you never know when you're going to run into a mini boss, which is when SP is most vital. Combos are free to use, but of course it's a little more difficult, and if you're surrounded by a large crowd, it may be risky. 
It's pretty fun, and I know I complained about this exact same thing when I talked about bosses earlier, but these aren't bosses. The goal is to clear out a small crowd of enemies, which is a lot more manageable compared to what the bosses present you with. Movement is a little weird in Dynasty Warrior games. Both in Persona 5 Strikers and Age of Calamity, I found the movement to be very loose. Your character will always just instantly turn to wherever the direction your analog stick is pointing towards, and while that works during battles, where I may need to turn quickly to take out some enemies, it does not work for a regular traversal through the metaverse. The camera is also too slow. There are settings to make it faster, but the next speed option is too fast. Thankfully, during battles, you can just point Joker to wherever you want to look and then press the left bumper to reposition the camera behind him, but with these controls and camera issues, I tended not to enjoy the platforming in the game. Thankfully, the platforming is far and few, with most of the traversal requiring you to run through the streets or find points where you can just break physics with and fly towards. But all these issues with the controls and the cameras can also ruin your experience during battles. If you have an enemy against the wall, you can easily squeeze yourself between the wall and the enemy to mess the camera up, especially if the camera is locked onto the enemy. And good luck dodging the attacks of flying enemies when you can barely see their telegraphed attacks or attack names. The game isn't unplayable, however, I just feel like there could be a lot of improvements made to the controls to make the game a more enjoyable and fair experience. In fact, I enjoy Strikers more than Age of Calamity because Age of Calamity is really basic and bare bones and kind of too easy, while Strikers takes many elements from Persona 5 and infuses it into the Dynasty Warriors gameplay, so it feels a lot more unique and my dormant brain cells finally get to wake up. And one of these elements from Persona 5 I'm really glad to see is the stealth mechanic. Instead of fighting armies of enemies, you'll tend to find yourself revealing the true form of a shadow, which will subsequently spawn in a group of enemies in a smaller area. This way, you can still fight an overwhelming number of enemies warrior style, but just in small chunks spread across the map so you feel like a thief sneaking around, taking out enemies quickly rather than a soldier charging in. And despite the complaints about being able to cheese the game too easily, so much of the Persona systems from the original games have been brought over that there is a lot more depth than just hacking and slashing through enemies. Everything from buffs and debuffs to healing Persona skills to status ailments are in the game, so you'll definitely be putting a lot more thought into the fights compared to Age of Calamity's dodge and attack method. Ailments will hinder your performance in a fight, requiring you to have the right items or persona skills to negate them, or you could be knocked down, giving the enemy a chance to deal massive damage. You even have the Persona Fusion system, albeit it has been simplified and there are significantly less personas to collect, but that's fair enough since gameplay-wise this is a spin-off at the end of the day, plus the main focus is the real-time combat, so even though higher stats do help, bosses never become impossible with lower level persona as long as you have the skill and endurance to deal with them. The game also rewards you for deleting personas, so if you need to make some room to summon some other personas, you'll get persona points in return, which can level up your persona's general level and stats. Now, change to another topic, I feel like the game also doesn't give you as much SP compared to the original Persona 5. I tend to shy away from physical and gun skills because they cost HP and I feel like I'm gonna just use up all my SP healing after using those skills and there won't be enough SP to actually use elemental skills. On top of that, moves like Concentrate or Charge kinda confused me. Like sure, they more than double the damage for when I use Persona skills once, but why does that matter? I can either just cheese it with SP replenishing items or combo my way through a boss, and I can't bother doing the math to see if using concentrate or charge will actually conserve SP. So there's no real reason for me to use anything other than buffs and debuffs, which will last far longer, and I know for sure that they will help conserve SP. Joker can use charge or concentrate through a combo though with the right persona, but you'll need to do a particularly long combo for that, which will probably get extremely tedious, especially when you have to switch between personas to pull out the actual skill you want to double the damage for. But that's okay, an extra feature that I don't use won't hurt me anyways, and overall I found the combat to be quite fun, especially in segments where you have to protect Futaba and I had to strategically switch between allies to do the best damage so I could keep enemies away from her.
Okay, so now I just wanted to mention a few other things that don't really fit in the story or gameplay sections, but aren't big enough to warrant their own sections in the video. Firstly, there is a DLC that gives you a bunch of older Persona battle themes. The base game already has two new battle themes, but the DLC unlocks battle themes from the first Persona all the way up to 5 Royal. And the best part is that you can randomize the battle themes. You don't have to listen to just one theme at a time. This was a pretty big issue I had with Persona 5 and Royal, because hearing La Surprise and Take Over over and over again drove me crazy. But on the other hand, I wish the game had a fully original soundtrack. Strikers has quite a lot of music taken from the original Persona 5 during cutscenes, and I've already played through Persona 5 and Royal like 4 times in total, so it was really not fun hearing those pieces again. On the bright side, most of the cutscenes are voice actors, so there isn't as much reading compared to the original Persona 5, and you can immerse yourself with the gang a lot more easier. And if you are finding the game quite difficult, you can always pause and consume as many items as you need. The only issue with that is if you're using items frequently, the list will become quite a chore to go through. There are a lot of items in this game, and it's all really pointless. You can have 10 items that heal 10 HP, but they'd all be listed separately because, oh, one is a hamburger from Tokyo while the other is takoyaki from Osaka. But in terms of functionality, there's no difference between the items. Even when I wanted to use a simple SP item, I would have have to scroll down the long list of HP items to find one. Okay, so that's not all I have to say about Persona 5 Strikers, but this video is already too long, so I'll just cut it short here. If I'd rate Strikers, I'd give it a 70%. It's mostly fun, especially if you play it right. And if you fell in love with the Phantom Thieves and Persona 5, then it's completely worth the time to see what they got up to during their summer vacation. But if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like, and if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, support me so I have a reason to keep making them. And if you want to interact with me directly, I do have a Twitter account, and if you might also also want to check out my Discord server, uh, it's, it's dead right now, don't actually check it out. But otherwise, like at the end of every video, I bid you farewell.